Hallelujah. We'll go after you with everything that is inside of us to let you know that we love you and we cannot live without you. Come on, right in your house. Tell the Lord that you can't live without him. Right where you are, tell him I love you. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him that he is the source of your strength. He is the center of your joy. Come on and dive deep into your worship. Come on and get into the river and the flow. Right where you are, don't be ashamed to lift your hands and just say, Lord, I love you. I love you more than anything, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice, everybody, all over this sanctuary, all over the world, all over the people. Lift your voice and sing this song of love to him. Come on, everyone, say it.
a declaration of faith, a declaration of faith that even though I'm not standing next to my brother or sister, our praise is coming together. And our praise is lifting up, being lifted up, and our faith is rising, and our faith is extending. So right where you are, I want you to clap your hands. I want you to bless him right where you are. I want you to lift him up. Open up your mouth and don't be afraid or ashamed to give God the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You ready to walk the walk, Mark? So go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You ready to get my hospital and give God the glory? Hallelujah, hallelujah. For he is the king of glory. Hallelujah, he is the king.
access code 409683-POUND. Once again, that number is 1-712-770-5603, access code 409683-POUND. Also, we want to inform you of a wonderful event that's taking place every Sunday now, and that is the Zoom Fellowship. Mega Church. That is occurring every Sunday from 1.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The ID for that is 861-2020-7713. The meeting pin number is Mega Cares. That's M-E-G-A-C-A-R-E-S. Once again, that is taking place every Sunday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The ID number is 861-2020-7713, and the mega pin number is Mega Cares, M-E-G-A-C-A-R-E-S. Once again, we want you to know that we love you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, we are here uh, just to make sure everyone is, is clear. We are live at Mega Church, but we are practicing social distancing. As you saw, we only had a worship team rather than our entire choir. We only have our sound tech and videographer, our officiant, and our band properly spaced apart because as Bishop said, we do want to obey the laws of the land or the guidelines of the CDC, although we do not operate in fear, amen? Uh, we are on Instagram Live, so those of you who are on Instagram, if you want to uh, comment back and forth to one another and things of that nature, feel free. We are just going to enjoy our time, although it is virtually, we're going to enjoy our time together. Uh, we are not going to uh, be here long, but we wanted to, as I said before, we wanted to come together and to at least give you one live service so that we could connect and we could worship together, we could take this time to make declaration that our God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, amen. amen. Please be mindful, uh, if you did not hear Bishop's announcement, uh, the next two Sundays he will be um, streaming a very, very important uh, message to both houses, both Mega Church and San Francisco Temple. Um, he'll be Streaming, we'll be streaming those on YouTube um, so that you can take advantage of those, um, the mega website as well. And then on Mother's Day, Mother's Day, we are asking everyone to stay home. We won't be having any church services, um, but stay home and celebrate your mother. Or if you don't have a mother um, on the earth anymore, find some, someone to share that love with. Or if you're a mother and you don't have anyone to spend time with, uh, we will still do our Zoom meeting at 1.30, from 1.30 to 2.30 every Sunday, just so that we can stay connected. Um, we had our first one last week, and it was a lot of fun. It was good to see faces and hear how the Lord is protecting and keeping individuals. Um, we even had some testimonies and some praise, uh, praise reports. So we just want to continue to do that so that we can stay connected. Amen. So I'm going to be delivering the word this morning. And I'm, uh, we, we do have our, our voices and rhythmic sounds still in the sanctuary. I'm going to release them to um, enjoy the service and reply if they choose. We are not doing a uh, TV taping where you can't uh, say anything. Just... If your baby is babbling, oh, just, there's no babies here. <laughs> we are the only ones here. Get your Bibles. We're going to go to a few passages of Scripture, including our target Scripture for the year. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 is where we're going to start. We're going to be reading that from God's Word translation. And then, if you can, find Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Verse 11 and 12, we're going to go there as well. Let's say our declaration of faith together. If you don't remember it, I'll say it, you repeat after me, and we'll go from there. I believe this.
this is God's word. I believe this is God's word. I believe it is for me. I believe it is for me. I accept it as mine. I accept it as mine. I will appropriate it to my life today. I will appropriate it to my life today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace and not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we honor you for this is the day that you have made. Every day is the day you have made. But this one in particular, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to share these brief moments together, whether they're over the airwaves, over the social media, over platforms, or if we're standing next to someone or we're, we're in the same house with someone else, another believer, God, we thank you for that opportunity that we are still free to worship and to declare that our God reigns. Lord, we ask that in these brief moments you would open the, uh, the ears of our understanding, oh God, open our eyes so that we would see what you would have us to see, anoint our heart to receive your word on today, and God, we ask that you would empower us to walk in it, to live in it, to talk about it, Lord, to share it with someone else, Lord God, that we would see much fruit in the days to come, and we give your name glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want to I want to use Jeremiah 29 and 11, the latter portion that says, plans to give you a future filled with hope. Right, right where you are, I want you to say, say it after me. Say, plans, plans. to give me a future, me a future. Filled, with hope. filled with hope. Then if we uh, if we take that part of the of our target scripture, uh, I want you to understand something. And I, I started this a couple of weeks ago on the Mega Word, but I want you to understand that his plans include your future. Mm -hmm. you, you, can take, uh, you can be happy to know that God's plans contain your future. His plans include your future. But the question is, how do we get to that future that's in God's plan? So we go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11 in the King James. It says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. This is the word of the Lord that we're going to use as our target uh, scripture, our target verse, Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I want to read that. However, in the New Living Translation, it at verse 12, where it says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race, and the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. People can never predict when hard times might come. This is verse 12. And it says, but like fish in a net or birds in a trap, people are caught by sudden tragedy. That, uh, that 12th verse there, we don't normally put that with the race is not given to the swift or the battle to the strong. But understand that people can never, we can never predict when hard times are coming. You know, uh, I've heard time and time again whenever there's a, a large or significant tragedy or something that happens, um, sometimes it's even the church people who raise up and say, well, why didn't the prophets tell us it was coming? People can never predict when hard times might come. If God doesn't want you to know, he's not telling you. And that's all right. Like fish in a net or birds in a trap, people are caught by sudden tragedy. When tragedy comes suddenly, like what we're, having, what we're experiencing now, the coronavirus, it affects the wise and the skilled alike. Doesn't matter how wise you were, doesn't matter how skilled you were, right now we're all being impacted by a tragedy. We are all caught, but for the believer, 
How many believers do we have online? How many believers in the room do we have? But for the believer, we know that we have a future. We know that we have a future in God because he has plans for us. And we know we have a future. And it's that future that is filled with hope that dictates how we need to run this race. It's that future filled with hope. This is why I am so grateful for a bishop that understands the, the uh, uh, following the guidelines of the CDC, yet declaring we will not live in fear. That we will follow after the will of the Lord. Why? Because we have a future that's filled with hope, and that hope tells us how to run this race. Now understand something. We are currently not in a sprint. I, I know many of us who uh, whose lives have been impacted, whether you're, you're furloughed from your job or you're working from home with three and four kids stomping around while you're trying to have a conference call or, or uh, you're trying to teach a class all online and all you hear is the trash talk, trash, uh, 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 truck going down the street. You hear all this stuff that's distracting. I know many of us would love for this to have been a sprint. That the day that Governor DeWine said everyone needs to practice social distancing and work from home that it only lasted one day. I know you all wish that, but understand this is not a sprint. I don't care whether they open up the city on May 1st, May 7th, or June 1st. It's still not a sprint. Working in the healthcare um, sector, I understand that this is going to take some time. My wife on the way here, she asked me, do you think that this is going to be the new normal? I said, I don't know if all of it will be the new normal, but some things might change. We might have to continue some things. But understand that this is not a sprint, but we are definitely continuing in a race. And we have to run this race with patience. So how are we going to run the race is the question. And how do I get to my future because I'm stuck in the house? I can't go nowhere. I can't even go to my graduation. I can't go to school. I can't finish my degree. I can't do these things that I thought were the steps that I had to take in order to get to my future. So how, how do I get to my future? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Starting at verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin with thus so easily beset us. This is the part I want you to pay real close attention to. It says, And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Run with patience. Uh, you need to tell yourself, not your neighbor, that it's going to take patience to get through this. I know uh, there might be some parents that are ready to pull out the last few hairs you got, and they may be great, but it's going to take some patience. I know those of us who are expecting miracles from God understand it's going to take some patience. The only way that you're going to get to your future is if you practice some patience. It's awesome to practice social distancing, but practice some patience. Tell yourself, I need to practice patience. Uh, verse 2 goes on to say, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I don't want to go any further right there, but I just want to stop right there just for a second. And I want, I, I want to pour this into you. Who should you be looking at? Are we looking at Governor DeWine? Are we looking at President what's his name? <laughs> Trump? I'm going to say Obama. That's my president. Uh, are we looking at Trump? Are we looking at Nancy Pelosi? Are we looking at Dr. Acton? Are we looking at Dr. Fauci? Which Dr. Fauci, uh, he's a godsend. Uh, he needs his voice to uh, increase. But uh, are we looking at them? No. We look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, it's Jesus that's going to help you get through this race that you have to run with patience. Because tomorrow, you have to stay in your house. But if you're not patient, you'll become impatient. And you might put yourself in a situation that causes you to succumb to what the enemy wants to do to you. But if I look to Jesus, Jesus will always comfort me. Jesus will always let me remind me that I have a future. That I don't have to worry about it today. Well, today, he'll take care of me today. But guess what? He's also going to take care of my tomorrow. 
Why? Because if God said tomorrow's going to happen, you can best be assured it has to happen. Tell yourself it has to happen. It has to happen. And in order for us to come out of this thing, I, I, I recognize that uh, this is this is a process. This is something God's trying to do something in us. God's trying to do something with us. God's trying to make some things happen in us. But in order for us to come out of this thing as pure gold, the church, right where you are, say the church. Say so he's talking to me. He's talking to me. The church must be resilient. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord gave me the word resilience, and I didn't understand why. But he said, I need you to understand that I need you to take some time and study this. So I've been studying the word resilience. Um, and if you look it up in the uh, dictionary, it says that resilience, to be resilient, is to be able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Yeah. Are we living in diff difficult conditions? Anybody got a difficult condition in your living room? Anybody got a difficult condition in your bank account? Anybody got a difficult condition on your job? Um, but another definition says that it's uh, when you're resilient, you're able to recoil or spring back into shape after bending, stretching, or being compressed. After I read those definitions, I said, that's me right there. Can anybody else testify that that's you right there? Uh, this is the thing about it, is that we have to determine what we want to look like and be like when we come out of this. You've got to determine what you want to look like and what you want to be like when you come out of this. Do you want to come out of this the same way you went in it, broke down, busted, and disgusted? Or do you want to come out better than when you were before this thing happened? How do I want to look when I come out of this? I told our leaders a couple of weeks ago, I said, we at Mega Church, we've got to define what Mega Church is going to look like after the pandemic. Are we going to go with status quo? Or are we just going to come and have church? Are we just going to come and expect an uh, hour and a half service, pay our tithes and our offering, and go home? But or are we going to utilize this time to redefine and, and take the vision that God has given us and really put some feet to it to understand how do we do this in this new generation with this new understanding of, of social distancing and virtual uh, communication? What can we do differently? How are you going to look? And what are you going to be like when you come out of this? Understand this, that patience will allow us to get before God. Uh, if, if, if no one else, I, I had to take, uh, after the first or two, first, first or second day, I had to go to God and I had to apologize because I, I told my wife last night, I said, the church is right now, the church was full of two different types of people. It was the type of people that when this is over, they're going to be running to the church because they missed being in the church. They missed uh, 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 coming together. Why? Not because they were always here and it was normal for them, but they realized what they were missing when they didn't have the option. And the other kind of people that uh, exist in the church are the people that took the pandemic break as a break. We were the ones doing all the work. We were tired. We were taking this time off to get rejuvenated and revived. I said, those are the two different types of people in the church. Some of us just needed a rest. Is that anybody? I, I, I needed a rest, but I had to go to God and I had to ask God for forgiveness because even though I'm resting from driving 30 miles to the church two and three times a week um, and driving home two and three times a week, that it does not give me the, the option to not be in his presence, to not pray, and to not study, and to not fast, that I have to still do that because patience will allow us to get before God and hear what he wants us to do so that when we come out of this, we're doing things different than what we did going in. I know some of you stay at home and Amazon has become your best friend. Uh, but you have to understand something. If you were living paycheck to paycheck before, why would you do the same things while you're in it? Take this opportunity to save some money. Take this opportunity to, to, to realize and, and set a budget or make some plans for your future. But patience will allow us to get before God and truly understand 
how to communicate and show his love to those that have lost during this tragedy. We've got to hear the voice of God so we know how to testify and how to declare and how to speak and how to minister to people who have lost during the tragedy, who have lost loved ones, who have lost their jobs, who have lost their future, uh, their idea of the future. We've got to have the word. Why? Because they're looking for an answer. They're looking for a reason. Why did this happen? How am I going to make it? How do I live now? And we, the church, has to rebound, rebound in a way that shows the world how to rebound. If we, as the church, come out of this thing doing the same old churchy stuff we did before, then shame on us. Because the world, regardless of how much they're protesting, opening up the government and opening up the cities, regardless of all of those things, we've got to set a new norm coming out of this thing. And the church, go back in history, before the church lost its voice, the church was the voice that everyone followed. We've got to rebound. Understand this, why, why, why we need patience during this thing. Why do you need patience watching this this morning? Is because Jesus never rushed anything. Jesus never rushed anything. He walked. The Bible tells us time and time again that Jesus walked. And even with his supernatural DNA, he still walked. Jesus had the power and the ability, just like Adam. He was the second Adam. He could have gone, as, as Bishop Tudor Bismarck taught us, that he could have moved at the speed of thought. But he understood there's a reason to walk. So stop trying to rush out of this thing. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it, it doesn't feel good. I know we, we want to get back to doing something. We want to visit our family and visit our friends and we want to go out shopping and like AP, go to Walmart and all those things. It's been hours. I know we want to do these things. But be patient. Take the time. Why? Because understand this. Although we're all longing to be out of a house, we're all longing to just be at the barbecue. All these things. And to be free to do those things. There's validity in staying in. I need somebody to tell yourself, there's validity in my staying in. Uh, let me prove it to you. Jesus stayed in the grave three days. Lazarus stayed in the grave until the Bible said he stank. The three Hebrew boys stayed in the furnace while the guards burnt up. Samson stayed bound in the prison house of the Philistines. All of these men recognized or had to go through a period of staying in. What did they have in common? Let me take you to Job 23 and 10. It says, but he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Anybody want to come out like gold? If you want to come out as gold, type it on there, put a comment in. I want to come out as gold. I want to come out as gold. And each of these men faced uh, uh, difficult conditions. As the definition of resilient told us, a difficult con condition. Each were faced with a situation or a tragedy that would strain and stress them. Anybody been strained and stressed, stay at home. Uh, uh, it's funny to me that most of us, when we had our jobs and we had to go to work every day, the first thing we would say every morning was, I don't want to go to work. Now everybody wants to go to work. Everybody, I want to go to work. Uh, remember that when it's time to go to work. Uh, I want to remind you of the definition of resilience and give you a, a slightly different uh, meaning. It says the capability of a strained body to recover its size and shape after deformation caused especially by compressive stress. An ability to recover from 
or adjust easily to misfortune or change. I want to read that last one again. An ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. Listen, God knew that the body, who's the body? Are you the body? We're the body. God knew that the body would be stretched and compressed. God knew that the body would be challenged to stay connected, not able to be complacent anymore and relaxed in our mundane approach to worship services. Where we, were, where, where we made coming to the house of God a chore or just something to do rather than uh, an honor and a privilege to stand in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with other believers. He knew this was going to happen. God knew, the Lord knew that COVID-19 was going to come. He knew we would be on lockdown. He knew that the government would try and open up the country quicker than we felt safe. Uh, remember, while each of the men that I mentioned before were in, in these conditions, they took advantage of the time. You need to take advantage of the time. Every one of them took advantage of the time. Samson got his life right with God and realized where his tr true strength came from. The three Hebrew boys sat with the angel of the Lord and had devotion. Uh, they took advantage of the time. Lazarus caused a gathering while Jesus walked to the funeral and became, and Lazarus became a miracle. Jesus himself went into the depths and snatched the keys of death and hell in those three days. And all of them were in preparation for what? Their future. Your time in, take it as preparation for your future. Uh, all of them, all of them took this as preparation for their future. What you need to do is take this time as preparation for your future. I told you this week, you need to do something different. Start, start learning the instrument. Start reading a book. Do something. Get some kind of uh, time. I, I, I see Brother Ron is here. He was singing with us today. And I have to, um, I have to, um, Maybe rub this in his his in his face. I started learning my bass, uh, Andrew and Benny. Um, I, I learned my first six notes or seven notes or whatever. Uh, open string and all that. I, I, I got you. Um, take this time as preparation. I'm not replacing y'all. I just want to learn. Um, this is not the time for us to relax. It's not. Uh, the time for us not to think about our purpose. You should be thinking about your purpose. Don't don't sleep on this moment. Don't sleep on this. Uh, I think the song, uh, the secular song said, don't let this moment pass you by. But take advantage of this time. We need to be in preparation for our future. Why? Because we're going to make a comeback. Oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, the title of today's message is I'll Be Back. Uh, it's, it's, it's time for us to use this downtime as time to go up higher. We need to take this time to make a comeback. A comeback that's full of faith. A, a comeback that is full of promise. A comeback that is full of the supernatural power of the love of God. A, a comeback that is full of miracles, signs, and wonders. A comeback that is full of compassion and yet spiritual warfare. COVID is going to go away. Stay at home is going to go away. Depression is going to have to go away. Low self-esteem is going to have to go away. Grief is going to have to go away. But while you're waiting, you ought to let COVID know. You ought to let grief, you ought to let everything else that is bending you and compressing you and straining you and making your day a challenge that I'm prepared. 
preparing myself. I'm focused on Jesus. Who's going to finish this thing? Understand, I don't know who started this. I don't know who patient zero might have been. But when it's all said and done, Jesus is going to finish this thing. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter the situation that I'm facing today. I'm letting my situation know today I'll be back. Right where you are, I want you to say it real loud. I'll be back. I might be on the back side of the mountain today, but I'll be back. I might be in a desert situation right now, but I'll be back. You may have been furloughed and told you can't come to work right now, but you need to make declaration that I'll be back. And when I get back, I'm going to be strong. When I get back, I'm going to be ready. When I get back, I'm going to be carrying the love of Jesus with me. Love the song said, though trials come on every hand. Like going on. I need somebody this morning that feels like going on because I know that at the end of this, I've got a great comeback. I'll be back. Nothing will stop me from getting to my future that God has promised me. I know that my future is in the palm of his hand, even though I don't know everything that's in my future. He holds my future. You can knock me down today, but guess what? I'll be back. Somebody give God praise right where you are. Magnify him and bless him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you for your, your loving kindness. We thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We honor and bless your name, O oh God, today. We lift you up and we declare that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and there's no one greater than you. You are strong and mighty, and God, while we're in this thing, Lord, work on us. Work on us, God. Work on us, God. Equip us and make us ready. Put it on our hearts to spend time in your presence so we can get closer and go higher. Lord, that when we come out of this thing, that will be as pure gold. Come on, voices. Father, we honor and we bless you. We pray for everyone watching. We pray that the peace of God shall cover them. We pray that your strength, God, would uphold them. That even in this time, you'll give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we still pray for our pastor, our woman of God. We call her name. Pastor Lois Blackwell, we pray strength to return to her body. God, we pray blessing upon her. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, we speak to every fiber, every tissue, and every muscle. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Be thou made whole. Take up thy bed, woman of God, and walk. We pray for our bishop. We cover him, O God. Lord, even now, for the word that is going to go out over the airways on the next two weeks, God, we pray a shield of protection around about him. Lord, that no weapon formed against him will prosper. And we give you glory, we give you honor. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord this morning. And before we go, we just want to give God one more worship, one more praise, and declare that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth.